Well, praise God and welcome to Leah Hall on Light. Good to see you guys. I meant to do it this morning, but, well, <laughs> exigent circumstances. <laughs> My mind went on, <laughs> shall we say, brain fog and brain fart. <laughs> Forgive me, okay, for speaking maybe a little bit irreverent. Anyway, we're going to cover the last of, of Galatians chapter 2. And the beginning of Galatians chapter 3. So from Galatians chapter 2 verse 17 to Galatians chapter 3 verse 5. So get ready. This is some wonderful stuff here. Verse 7. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ... The minister of sin, God forbid. Verse 18. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Verse 19. For if I, for I through the law am dead to the law, <coughs> that I might live unto God. Verse 20, this is a key verse here. I'm going to mark it on my Gospel Library app. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me, and gave himself for me. Verse 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law. Then Christ is dead in vain. Now. We're going to look at the verse in the, in the book of Mormon. Mosiah chapter 13. Uh, verse 28. No. Verses uh 27 and 28. And now ye have said that salvation cometh by the law of Moses. I say unto you that it is expedient that ye should keep the law of Moses as yet. But I say unto you that the time shall come when it shall be uh, no more be expedient to keep the law of Moses. Well, when Christ came, it no longer became expedient for us to keep the law of Moses, except for those that are part of the higher law of Christ. Now, Galatians chapter 3. I'm going to try to keep this short. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, uh, crucified among you. <laughs> okay, I'm back. <laughs> Verse 2. This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law? Or by the hearing of faith? That's pretty obvious. And I'm going to read the verse we're going to be going through again next month. 2 Nephi chapter 2 verse 5. And men are instructed sufficiently that they know good from evil. And the law is given unto men. And by the law no flesh is justified. Or by the law men are cut off. Yea, by the temporal law they are cut off. And also, by the spiritual law, they perish from that which is good and become miserable forever. Or by the hearing of faith. You know, it's pretty obvious. 
Paul said in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay? Verse 3. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that grants to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even so, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Oops, I went over a verse, but it, that's, that is going to give you something to chew on when we come back on Sunday. See, here's the thing. The law of Moses was done away with, and at the same time, and that was when Christ went on the cross after having perfectly living the law of Moses. He went on that cruel cross and died for our sins. And I'm, I'm going to share something with you. This morning, I was feeling very lonely and discouraged, real sad. And I was crying out to God, and he said, Why is this so? What, 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 what are you going to do to help me with this? And he said, I already have. He said, My son, Jesus Christ, he bled and died on a cruel cross all alone, Jimmy, so that you don't have to be alone. The atonement did away with the law of Moses. That just gives me the title on this. The atonement of Jesus Christ did away the law of Moses. Now, the only caveat where it's not done away is the higher law. And where was the higher law given? Well, I'm going to say this in the truth of the old Baptist boy. We know it was given in, 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 in the Book of Mormon, but, you know, for the most part, I cover the Bible. And it was given on the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. That Matthew chapter 5 through 7. That was the higher law of Christ. So, let's not fart about on, on this. And I want to say something else that's in my, in my heart, too. So many people want to split hairs on that higher law. And the issues of higher law and lower law. We can claim that we're living the higher law. But let me ask you this. When, it, when was the last time that members of the church have reached out to members that were lonely? When was the last time that you actually came to their home or you invited them to, to their home? Other churches are doing this. Why can't we? I don't, I don't mean to be critical of the church, but this is, to me, this is, this is a weak area. The law of Moses was done away with, but the higher law was not. And you know what? One thing that the higher law says is, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And I think it's up for us who know our baptismal covenants to do better about comforting those that mourn. I'm speaking my heart here. Some people think, well, people leave the church over doctrinal issues or over political issues. I have a strong doctrinal found foundation. As for the church politically, come on, guys, we have our own views. Let's learn to live with that. But where I think is their weaknesses, is the church properly fellowshipping people 
like they should. And sadly, I have to say, as much as I love the church, I have to say the answer in some ways is no. But I can't end on a, on a, on a negative note. This is where the beautiful part comes in. Jesus Christ, he came and bled and died on the cross with us. And he can fellowship with us so that we don't ever have to feel lonely or alone. But you know what? We are his body and we need to be there. Okay? That's just, that's just saying, I'm just saying my heart and mind and I don't need to upset anybody. But I'm just saying what I'm seeing. And we need to have better outreach in order to keep people. Because, you know, I sit in meetings sometimes and people wonder why do people fall away. In my perspective, this is, this is part of it. Doesn't mean that I'm going to leave the church anytime soon. But I'm just giving my perspective. Now with that, I hope you enjoy listening to Leah Hona Light. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. Become a part of the Leah Hona Light family. This is Jimmy Hendricks saying until next time. Remember who you are. Read your scriptures. And please, please, please preach the gospel and minister to your flock. God bless you.